one a year cold case. She said, Steve, I couldn't tell you right there, but he's passed away. Still unsolved. We upped the reward uh, not once, but twice. Whatever happened to Junior Montoya the day he was killed in a hit and run. This was a purposeful act. They ran my dad over, then they ran him over again. Could someone have clues to crack the case? Accidents happen, but murders in our family, particularly my dad, that doesn't happen. Next on Pinal County, Cold Case Investigations. Here at the Pinal County Attorney's Office, our responsibility is to hold people accountable and enable victims to begin healing. Cold cases like the one you're about to watch linger in our communities and prevent families from getting closure. This video contains details that we hope will spark a memory that may be the key to solving this case and bringing justice to the victim. If you have any information about this tragic event that happened more than 20 years ago, please reach out to Silent Witness. Beyond the cotton fields of Pinal County, 70-year-old Elohio Montoya enjoyed the small town living in Casa Grande. It was uh, late September, um, so for us in the ag agricultural business, we were busy. Junior, as his family and friends call him, was a teacher in Stanfield. He taught uh, multiple grades. I know eighth grade was one of his big ones, but he taught uh, PE. When Junior wasn't looking after his five kids, he was looking after his students. Did you see some of uh, Dad's basketball pictures? Two of his sons, Carl and Steve Montoya, have fond memories of him. Stanfield Merchants. If people couldn't go on trips at school, he would pay for them. He was just a present dad. He was hands-on. He also enjoyed his time in the agricultural fields. He was a school teacher, but the months he had off, he would go out to cotton fields and um, check for bugs. Later in life, Junior remarried a woman named Maggie who had four sons. He was still a force of nature until late September 1998. On a clear sunny day, he left his house. He routinely he took his evening walks. I mean, that's that was routine. Little did his family know this was the last time anyone would see him alive. Just after six in the evening, Junior was in a parking lot near 10th Street and Casa Grande Avenue, close to home. A witness told police she was in her backyard watering when she heard the sounds of a fight and tires screech. When she looked through the gaps in her fence, she saw a small white vehicle leaving the parking lot and a person on the ground. By the time police showed up, they found Junior run over and left for dead. I heard a couple versions. Uh, I heard there was a fight, I heard there was a gray truck, I heard there was a white truck. But no one knew if the fight had anything to do with this deadly hit and run. 20 years later, former Casa Grande lead traffic officer Jeffrey Palmer talks about the investigation. Old Cougar Stadium used to have the bleachers here on the south side, and then the main parking lot was here on the west side where the incident actually took place. The news spread quickly. I mean, we knew everybody in town, so I mean, a small community back then. Um, so it, it, it hit town pretty, pretty hard. Junior's belongings were scattered across the parking lot. He was found lying in a pool of blood with visible injuries. At the scene, there was approximately one foot acceleration mark on the ground. There was a small piece of scalp and a rosary, and that's all that was at the scene. He was rushed to Casa Grande Medical Hospital, but the hit and run turned deadly. After I got the news, you know, you slowly try to uh, calculate and try to figure out what's going on. One witness told police he was on a walk when he saw a silver or gray pickup truck peeling out from the parking lot. And two nine-year-old boys playing down the street said they noticed a similar truck quickly leaving. I'm pretty sure that whoever hit Mr. Montoya is scared at the time. He had to release the pent up frustration, the, the adrenaline, whatever. But as it turned out, finding a suspect wasn't that simple, and the investigation was producing few good leads. I sat up in the parking lot down the street here a little ways, seeing that there was a normal routine of traffic, pedestrian or vehicle, 30 minutes prior to the accident scene, accident, 
and about 30, 45 minutes afterwards, and there was no set routine for anybody in the area. After Junior's death, Pima County Medical Examiner's Office revealed new details. Junior wasn't hit once, but twice. To me, to, to uh, somebody would say, oh, I didn't know, I, I, I can't buy that. You know, it just that's just too big of an object to not know that you hit something and something was wrong. And by December 1998, new rumors were popping up. There was also a rumor that a young, I think he was about 15, 16, year old male hung himself in the backyard because he had, in, had some knowledge of this. When we followed up on that rumor, it turned out that his girlfriend jumped him. In this small town, police started to wonder why they were getting so much bogus information. I would say probably about 75% of the people we talked to didn't, it's, they just want to get famous, it sounds like in my book. I, ha I know something and see where it takes me. With few good leads, police got help from Silent Witness, a program that takes anonymous tips. The group offered a $1,000 reward for information. Junior's family offered even more. We upped the reward, uh, not once, but twice. With flyers spread across the community and the newspaper sharing updates, the family had hopes for closure. We just kept waiting, and, and here we are 20 years later, still waiting for that phone call for that one bit of information. Finally, they got a bite through Silent Witness. A student at Casa Grande High School said she overheard her father talking about a co-worker at Ross Labs who said he hit Junior Montoya. We went to his residence in Arizona City. We interviewed him and it didn't pan out to where we thought it was going to go. The impression I get from leading, listening to the police authorities, people would call in and people would shut up. Frustration was building, but the biggest surprise was yet to unravel. Remember, Junior got remarried late in life and one of his stepsons was suspicious his brother had a part in Junior's death. We just wanted to make sure there was nothing there. I mean, his brother brought it up and the, the police had talked to him. When police interviewed the man, he told them his brother was acting odd after Junior's death, drinking and laughing like it was a celebration. Family members wanted to settle accusations. Some wonder if it's possible that this was the fight a caller heard. And that's when the uh, polygraph or voice analysis that we took that came up and said, hey, look, you know, if he's going to go through one, let's do, let's all go through one so that way he doesn't think we're picking on him. One by one, each of Junior's kids took a polygraph test, but when it came time for the man accused of running over his stepfather. He lived at the house and they wanted to put him on a polygraph. And as I recall, he initially refused. There was put the Montoya boys on too and when we were approached by the police, if we would be okay with a polygraph test, what I remember is we all said, sure, when do you want us? As a result, we all went in and we went up to, uh, they strapped us in there, we took a test, uh, we all passed. But their stepbrother refused the test. When police caught up with him, he was back in jail for a DUI. He refused the polygraph, telling others he was innocent. If he knew anything or, or had any portion to do with it, you know, that, that's still, you know, we don't know. 20 years later, the family wants closure, and so do authorities. Shake the trees as hard as you can and just see what falls out and just that one piece of information that will make this thing move forward. Good get-togethers. Well, this family still spends time reminiscing. We used to have the best. They believe this story has an end. I've been waiting for that one phone call for 20 years and so hopefully you know one day it will and will give us that closure that we need. But many still wonder. That's what these pictures do they bring back memories and good times and uh, safe times and safe times and, and uh, family times. Was this solely a hit and run? We all thought it would be solved quick but that didn't happen. Or as some believe the case of a cold-hearted killer. With the arrest of whoever did it that's how we want to see them all end. We always want to see the bad guy go to jail. Accidents happen, but murders in our family, particularly my dad, that doesn't happen. If you have any information about this tragic event that happened more than 20 years ago, please reach out to Silent Witness.